Uh, in my capacity as Member of the Committee for Justice, I welcome the opportunity to open today's seminar on the legal needs of children and young people. Since the devolution of policing and justice to the Northern Ireland Assembly, the Justice Committee has explored a wide range of issues affecting children and young people. As part of its consideration of ways to reduce avoidable delay in the criminal justice system, the Committee explored the issue of statutory time limits which are to be introduced beginning with the youth justice system uh, to speed up the entire system. More recently, the committee has been briefed by the department on the results of a youth engagement clinic pilot study developed by the department to improve timeliness in youth cases. During this briefing, the committee explored the uptake of legal services and the availability of legal representation and legal aid in the pilot. And that proved interesting in itself. The committee also had the opportunity to visit Woodlands Juvenile Justice Centre to meet with young people and explored a number of issues during a facilitated discussion, and that too gave us invaluable insights to the backgrounds, the difficulties, the problems, and indeed some of them, quite a lot of them, mental health problems that wind up uh, with young people and many others uh, in the, 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 the criminal justice system itself. So. Officials from the Department of Justice and the Youth Justice Agency recently briefed the committee on the outcome of a consultation on changes to custodial arrangements for children and young people. The Access to Justice Review in 2011 recommended the commissioning of research on the legal needs of children and young people, paying particular attention to accessibility of advice and assistance, the way this is delivered and their experience of the justice system. The Youth Justice Review critically assessed the arrangements for responding to youth crime. Given the committee's scrutiny role, we consider the progress of the implementation of the review's recommendations by the department on a very regular basis. We are particularly interested in the publication of this research, and we will keep a close eye on how the department takes the research forward to address identified barriers faced by children and young people in accessing the justice system. I am delighted to introduce today's speakers, uh, Leslie Emerson and Dr. Karen Orr, who are accompanied by their colleagues, Dr. Katrina Lloyd, Professor Laura Lundy, and Ellen Weaver, uh, to present the findings of the research commissioned by the department. The research explores a number of issues, such as the nature and extent of the legal needs of children and young people, the extent these legal needs are being met, barriers to children and young people accessing legal advice, information and representation, and potential solutions to these barriers. You're all very welcome, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say in your presentation. So thank you very much indeed to those of you that have turned up here today. Thank you. Um, there was a number of things that we uh, sought to do in this research. We wanted to have a look at existing information in relation to young people's legal needs, and to have a look at um, data that was there in relation to them seeking legal advice and representation. And we're not going to report on that today because we're going to focus primarily on the views of adults and young people who were interviewed as part of the research and on the findings from a survey that was conducted with children and young people. Um, so we collected data from these range of different sources. Um, as I said, semi-structured interviews and a focus group were held with adult stakeholders um, that we drew from around 19 different organisations. And we also conducted over the summer last year focus groups with in total 91 children and young people and they were drawn from a range of different organisations representing um, young people in conflict with the law, young people in restorative justice schemes, um, the young people in the juvenile justice centre, young people from the travelling community, BME communities and young people with disabilities. Um, and from those focus groups we were able to get a sense of how those young people were experiencing the legal system and adults in particular and how they engaged with them in that system and that then helped us draw together a survey that we conducted across schools in Northern Ireland um, with over 400 young people responding to that aged 15 to 16 years old. So in one sense the survey gave us a snapshot of young people in general whereas the focus groups were giving us insight into how particular young people and particularly how some marginalised young people were experiencing the system. Um, 
As part of the work that we do in the Centre for Children's Rights, we take a rights-based approach to all of our research, and that means that if we are doing research that involves children and young people, then we make sure that they are engaged actively in the research process. And one way that we do that is to work with a young group of young people as advisors to the research throughout. And in this project, um, we'd like to acknowledge the work that was done by the young people in Dundonald High School. And these were young people who were 15, 16 years old, coming to the end of um, year 12. And they worked with us throughout the research project. They helped us design the research instruments. They gave us insight into how to conduct the survey. And they also helped us analyse the data. They spent a day with us in Queen's identifying some of the themes that came out of the focus groups with the young people. And it's their themes that we used to report the data under. So we'll come to that in a moment. Um, another thing that we try to do with all of our research is to ensure that the young people who are engaged in the research know who has the responsibility to act upon the findings. And we're very grateful to David Ford um, for agreeing to do a video for the young people. And in this, he explained the nature of the research and he explained to the young people that the department would listen seriously to what they were saying. And this video was used in the focus groups with the young people and it was embedded into the online survey so that the young people knew who was designated to listen to what they were saying. So that's the research process. The next couple of slides, um, I'm just going to give you a flavour of some of the findings in relation to what legal issues young people are telling us that they're facing. And then I'm going to touch upon the adults' views. And at that point, I'm going to hand over to Karen, who is going to speak in more detail about what the young people told us, because that's the primary thrust of this piece of research. Um, unsurprisingly, young people's legal, legal needs are varied and diverse. Um, it was interesting in the survey when we conducted the survey, we asked the young people at the start of it if they had ever experienced a legal issue. And at the start of the survey, about 17% of the young people across this, that school population said that they had. We then took them through a series of different issues that they might have faced in their lives to ask them if they had ever experienced that. Because what we did know, particularly from the focus groups, is that a lot of young people have very, very limited knowledge of their legal needs, their legal rights and legal issues. And as a result, don't think that they have legal issues. And interestingly, even when we took them through a series of issues where they were identifying, um, dealing with faulty goods, having bad service, noisy neighbours, um, engagement with the police, a range of different issues that they identified, we asked them again after they'd gone through all of those if they had felt that they'd ever had any legal needs. And 19% of young people responded yes. So it started to indicate to us that young people aren't really fully aware of what their legal needs are. In the survey, the young people who did indicate that they'd had a legal need, out of those 80 young people who indicated that, 42% of them felt that their legal need had been met. In the focus groups, the story was slightly different, where the young people that we were engaging with in the focus groups did not feel that their legal needs had been adequately met on the whole. In terms of the adults' views, um, again, I'm just going to touch on these because I want more time to be devoted to what the young people said. In all of the ad adults who were interviewed, there was an uh, overwhelming response from them saying that there was a need for very, very specialist knowledge and skills to meet the legal needs of children and young people. And the, young peop uh, the adults who were interviewed did not feel that that was adequately recognised by many members of the legal profession. Um, they felt that children and young people were often left poorly informed about their legal rights due to insufficient time being spent with them by lawyers and inappropriate communication on the part of the legal profession, not being able to find ways of communicating effectively to young people. And as you'll see when Karen speaks to you, these issues were, were borne out from the focus groups with the young people. Um, notably, issues around delays were raised by the adults as having a particular impact on young people. They did, however, recognise that progress had been made, and in particular in relation to the judiciary. And again, the young people noted that in the focus groups, that in the judiciary, in some cases, they felt that they were listened to and that they were respected. Um, but they did, um, the adults did indicate that things could still be improved in that area and that there was a need for adequate funding for solicitors in the voluntary sector organisations and legal aid practices. An overwhelming thing coming out from the adults as well was in relation to the need for accreditation requirements for those people working with children and young people in all areas of the law, that there should be appropriate professional standards that attend to appropriate engagement with children and young people. 
And again, the young people, this resonated with, the, with their views. They wouldn't have expressed it exactly in that way, but they did indicate that they felt that the people in the legal profession working with and for them um, needed to be better trained in how to deal with them and to speak to them on those issues. So that gives you a flavour of the, of the adults' views. There's a bit more information in the briefing that you have. But what we want to really focus on now is what the young people told us. And this is primarily, primarily coming from the focus groups, but also with some information from the survey as well. We worked with the advisory group of young people to go through the qualitative data, and they helped us kind of theme that data. And these are the themes that they identified in the work that they did with us. They identified that there were issues in relation to learning about rights. It was very clear from the focus groups that young people had limited knowledge and understanding of rights. An interesting thing to come out of the focus groups was that even if you do know about your rights, there is a, it's a serious issue and there are consequences associated with exercising those rights. And there was something coming out there in relation to whether or not it was appropriate to challenge or not. A big theme was not being listened to, which we've referred to here as young people's participation rights. And the young people talked a lot about discrimination. But as you see, when that comes up, it seemed to be very much attached to the idea of demonisation of young people and the impact that that had on them in their day-to-day -day life, but in the legal system itself. And then they talked um, quite clearly that our young people pulled out the same that adults aren't doing their job well. There are some adults that are not doing their job well, but there are adults who are doing their job well. So those were the themes that we used to drive the main findings um, from the young people's data. And Karen is now going to present on those. So I'm going to take you through each of the themes that, like Leslie has mentioned, they are basically the findings from both the focus groups with a little bit of the findings from the survey as well. And these themes that we have up here are the themes as guided by the Young Persons <coughs> Advisory Group. So as has been noted before, one of the key themes that came out of the research was that young people knew very little about their legal needs or their legal rights. I'll not necessarily go through each quote for you on each slide. There is a quote to sort of give evidence to the point we're making, but essentially this exchange here in the first instance is a young guy who's not sure of whether or not it's okay for him to hang about the pier if he's not drinking. You know, there's been instances whereby um, young people are being moved on and being told that they can't do certain things and this young person in this exchange is actually asking us, the researchers, you know, do we have a right to sit there? Um, more important, or maybe more alarmingly, this next quote is from a young person in detention who, um, this quote demonstrates really how a lack of understanding of the young people's legal needs or legal rights can have serious repercussions. So this young person is saying about how he broke his bail and ended up back in the juvenile um, detention centre. However, the problem there was that he didn't even recognise or didn't know what bail was. So this kind of highlights that if young people aren't really aware of their legal needs or their legal rights, you know, there can be serious repercussions. Um, in terms of where or how young people learn about their rights, very often what we find especially with the young people who were maybe in conflict with the law, is that very often they learn through experience. So they're learning reactively as opposed to proactively, really, whereby they learn from going through the system. And they recognise that um, they didn't ever really learn about it in school. There were some schools or some kids that said they learned about it in school. They tended to be UNICEF rights respecting schools. So kids in those particular schools would have had some awareness or some realisation. But on the whole, a lot of the young people recognised that they didn't learn enough about this in school and they were quite confused as to why things like sexual education were taught. However, the legal system wasn't. So this first theme really highlights a major barrier to meeting the legal needs of children and young people in our society because very often they know very little about it themselves. This is some um, results from the survey that we conducted. We asked the young people some questions about their knowledge of their rights. So we asked them things about the age of criminal responsibility, things to do with getting a part-time job, issues around school and things like ASBOs. So what you'll find in this column here is the percentage of people that got the answer correct. Um, we were very encouraging in the survey to ask young people, if you don't know the answer, please hit don't know, because we wanted to get a real sense of the amount of young people that knew the correct answers. And you'll see yourself there that very few people got very few of the answers correct. But again, what I'd like to highlight here is, so say for example, for the age of criminal responsibility, 27% of the young people got it correct, 10% said they didn't know. That still leaves about 63, well, exactly, 63% of young people 
who got it wrong. In fact, for the most part, they thought the age of criminal responsibility was 16. They didn't realise that it was younger. And again, this highlights the fact that there's going to, there could be major repercussions if a child or a young person doesn't know the age of criminal responsibility or if they think it's older than what it actually is. There was also issues in terms of how many hours a young person thought that they could work on a school day and issues around their part-time job. Again, a lot of the young people either didn't know this or they got it wrong. And again, this points to, to major repercussions in terms of young people actually, you know, being, um, what's the word I'm looking for, exploited in the workplace, maybe. So, um, there were concerns around young people, as they called it, being able to challenge it or not. So if there was instances whereby a young person felt as though they were being treated badly by an adult, specifically in this instance, an adult within the legal system, i.e. a police officer, there was um, a lack of confidence, really, in young people's ability to exercise their rights. So what you have in this particular exchange is young person one, who is quite confident in exercising his rights versus young person two, who's not so confident. So this first young person is saying, you know, if a police officer pulls you, you should ask for a report, you should ask who he is. You know, he's saying there's not too many people standing up for themselves and that's, you know, young person one is recognising that there's a problem there, that a lot of young people don't feel confident to exercise their rights when it comes to adults, especially those in the legal system. And I think, um, I think again there what comes through the data is this fear of repercussion. I think of another quote coming up that really highlights that, that a lot of the time young people don't feel they can question an adult, especially if it's a police officer because they might just end up getting into more trouble. There was a huge theme of not being listened to. The majority of the young people we spoke to felt as though they weren't being listened to by adults, whether it's in the community or within the legal system. This is a particularly um, telling quote from a young person in detention who is saying that, you know, they feel as though that they have a right to have a say and they are still human beings and they still hurt and they still have a life. So they felt as though within, within their circumstances, the adults around them weren't actually listening to them. Like Leslie said before, discrimination was another key theme. Um, young people felt as though they were treated purely due to stereotypes about their age. So this first quote is for a guy that's saying he was walking up to his nanny's house with his hood up and automatically a policeman came over and said, what are you at, what are you up to, questioning him. And again, the second quote highlights how this can manifest itself in a young person because what this second guy is saying is, you know, they think I'm up to no good, so I might as well do it then. If the young people feel as though they're constantly being questioned by the police, some of the young people we spoke to in detention felt as though there was no motivation for them to stay out of trouble because they're getting accused of being in it anyway. So as Leslie again mentioned, there was um, quite some disgruntlement maybe from the young people in terms of adults not doing their job well, specifically adults within the legal system. This particular quote um, was a young person talking about a solicitor. They felt as though they didn't, write the use, didn't use the right words. So there was an issue in terms of communication between solicitors and the young people they were representing. Very often the young people felt as though they didn't know what the solicitor was talking about and the solicitor didn't put things into a clear and accessible format for them. This particular exchange, it wasn't, we wanted to highlight here that it wasn't just young people in detention or young people in conflict with the law that felt that this is actually a case of a, um, a young man who was going through a custody case to get access to his young daughter. And again, it's quite a heavy quote, but you'll see the, the comments that we have in bold there. You know, we didn't have a clue what was going on. It took forever. There were serious issues of delay. It was a grueling process. Nothing was explained to him beforehand. He goes on to say that he's going back to court again for the same thing, but he's prepared this time. So this sort of harks back to the previous comment we made that they're learning through experience. They're learning through having to go through the process as opposed to knowing or being prepared for anything beforehand. So that, that's just an example from a custody case. Now in saying that, there were also examples whereby the young people felt as though the adults within the legal system were doing their job well. So this particular young person felt as though their solicitor kind of dumbs everything down for them. He, um, he tells them how it is and if it's something he doesn't understand, then he'll change his wording. So there were examples whereby solicitors were able to communicate well with young people. So it was solicitors that they knew the area, they knew the area of the law that the young person needed help with. They knew the context of the young person Person, and they were able to actually communicate well with young people. So there were examples whereby um, adults within the legal system were doing their job well. 
Um, one of the key things we wanted to look at in order to try and overcome some of these barriers was to ask the young people what they felt the ideal adult within the legal system would look like or what, what sort of characteristics would they have. So it was important to the young people that the ideal adult would be professionally capable. So they would be well trained in terms of legal matters, but not only familiar with the legal issues, but the context and the community from which the young people come from. They wanted them to be, to be caring, so to be a, essentially a nice person, to be trustworthy, non-intimidating, non-judgmental and patient. It was very important that they had experience um, with working with young people, so it wasn't enough that they were legally qualified. They felt as though they needed to be able to engage and communicate effectively with young people so that they would be able to explain the complicated matters associated with the law in a non-patronising, engaging and interesting and as well as as importantly an honest manner. The young people didn't. They wanted things to be made clear to them. They didn't want it done patronisingly and they wanted it to be honest and the truth. And it was also important for the young people that they were recognised as rights holders so that the adults in the system listened to them, they would take them seriously and provide information in an appropriate manner. I think that's me back to you, Leslie. Leslie, I'll just go through the conclusions. I suppose just to reiterate that point that whilst in the focus groups in particular, we were finding quite a lot of issues that the young people were raising with us in terms of their experience of the system, there were positive stories, positive stories in relation to treatment by the judiciary, by the police and by solicitors, and, and I think in particular solicitors who were connected to the community and understood the young people. Um, but that was not the case in all communities. Um, also, in terms of that ideal adult, that was also drawn from open-ended questions that we had for the young people in the survey. So across um, all of the data that we collected from the young people, that's, that's the kind of person they wanted to engage with them. Um, I think what this really sort of stands out for us from the re research is that a single fundamental barrier to young people accessing justice is their lack of awareness and understanding of their legal rights. And again, their concern that exercising their rights could exacerbate the situation. So there were some young people who weren't confident in exercising their rights, but there were some young people who were concerned about um, whether or not that was a safe thing to do. And I suppose um, for those of us from an education background, and speaking of myself here as well, um, sometimes we think that what we need to do is to educate young people more about their rights, but we need to look at the way in which we empower young people in relation to their rights so that they can learn how to do that in a safe and confident manner. Um, the other thing is that, yes, at the start we said young people's legal needs are diverse. Um, as are adults, but the vulnerability of children and young people and their dependency on adults exacerbates the, these general problems in accessing justice. And I suppose just to sum up, these are the particular issues that we would be concluding from the research that need to be attended to in terms of the legal needs of children and young people. There's a need for appropriate communication skills for adults dealing with children and young people. There is a need for legal specialism in relation to the issues faced by children and young people. One of the things that did come out of the research quite strongly is that young people are going to their local solicitor who may be an expert in conveyancing and not in the issues that they actually need addressed. So the legal specialism is important to the young people as well as coming from the adults um, that we interviewed. There needs to be adequate time given so that meaningful consultation can occur at each stage of the legal processes so that the young people are fully informed about what's happening to them. Um, you will see in the final report when it becomes available, there was a, a good bit of information around young people being dissatisfied um, in terms of their treatment by the police um, and seeking age appropriate treatment in relation to that. And clearly as well from the adults and the young people, a need for child friendly facilities and age appropriate court proceedings. Although there were some incidences, uh, as I said, where young people were pointing to that being done very, very well by some, by some judges. But overall, the theme that did come out quite strongly is the need to recognise children as rights holders and with the particular right to have their views sought, listened to and taken seriously at each stage. Okay, thank you.